Hello viewers, I am Professor Anuradha from the Department of Social Work, Sri Padmavati Mahila Vishwadhyalayam, Tirupati. Now, we shall discuss the lesson on communication and interviewing. As the title itself suggests, we have two sections in this particular lesson. The section A is on communication and the section B is on interviewing. Now, let us start with communication. As an introduction in communication, if you see, it is very difficult to imagine our life without communication. I hope all of you will agree. It's a natural phenomenon through which we share our thoughts, feelings or beliefs. And communication is the heart of social work practice and I'm sure all of you will agree because it's more so in the context of working with individuals and families. In fact, it is mentioned that social work is one of the first professions to recognize the importance of communication skills and link it to effective practice. In this lesson, the concept of communication that is by way of definitions, types and process of communication and the importance of interview techniques will be discussed. So what are our objectives of this particular lesson? On completion of this lesson, should be able to understand the importance of communication while working with individuals and families. Explain your understanding of various skills that can be used during the communication process. And lastly, practice effectively the skills and techniques of interviewing during your casework sessions. Effective communication is important for a social worker because it helps to build relationship with the clients. Every day social workers communicate with clients to gather and convey information through interviews, make assessments and decisions. So communication underlies all social work activities. It is the core of all social work relationships. It's an important medium for providing social work assistance, especially to the needy and the oppressed. In other words, all social interactions are necessarily communication. So, effective communication lies at the heart of social work practice. It helps us to understand what the clients are seeing, what their situations are and also to provide services there. So, in this section, you will learn about the definitions of communication, the process of communication and also the importance of verbal and nonverbal communication. This will be followed by interviewing which is one of the important methods of communication. So what is the concept? What is the definition of communication? Communication in practice, it tends to be defined primarily as verbal and non-verbal exchange of information, including all the ways in which knowledge is transmitted and received. De Venezuela says that communication necessarily involves any act by a person wherein he gives or receives from another person information about that person's needs, desires, perception, knowledge or affective states. On the other hand, Webster's Dictionary says communication is sending, giving or exchanging information and ideas. Kropowska in 2008 mentioned that communication is both interactive and context related. Moorhead and Griffin long back in 1994 said that communication is a process in which information is exchanged or it's a common understanding wherein which is established between two or more parties. Burton and Thakur said communication may be defined as a process of transmitting information. While Bhatia maintained that communication is a process by which we exchange meanings, facts, ideas, opinions or emotions with other people. The another author, Shukla in 2010, said that communication means sharing of ideas, thoughts and feelings between two or more or more than two persons. So, based on all these above definitions, we can see that communication can be understood as a transmission of ideas, thoughts and emotions by the communicator. For what? To develop a common understanding with the recipient. So, communication is transmitting information through some medium to create same meaning in the latter, that is the recipient and as intended by the former, that is the communicator or the sender. Now, so those were the definitions of communication. Now let's look at what are the essential components of communication. Communication process is a system that involves 
interrelated, interdependent group of elements working together as a whole to achieve a desired pattern or goal. So, communication is a creative and a dynamic process rather than a discrete or an isolated exchange of information. So, what are the key elements? We will look at the key elements of communication process. First thing is a messenger. You all know that to communicate something there should be a sender or a source. The person who has something to communicate. So, he is the messenger. Second thing is what does he send? What are we looking for? That is the message. So, what is a message? It may be a verbal or a non-verbal cue that needs to be transmitted or communicated. Three, how do we send the message? That is the channel. It means it is the means of communication. That is the medium that we use in order to communicate. And lastly, the receiver, the person who receives the information. Not needless to say, feedback is also an important aspect of communication. So, through this process, by feedback, we understand it as it is a process through which we ascertain whether the recipient has assigned the same meaning to the message that was sent by the source. So, those are the components of communication. Now, what is a medium? What are the media that we use for communication? When we say media, it refers to the intervening agency or means through which we try to communicate and we make communication possible. So, on the basis of the coverage of information, media may be interpersonal or it may be mass media and when we say mass media, it refers to a whole lot of things. We will start with interpersonal media. Interpersonal media refers to those means which are related to speaking and hearing, reading and writing, body language, while mass media are as you all know, radio, television, films, exhibition, newspapers, use of loudspeakers, signaling system and whole lot of other media that we are all aware of. In the case of a context, we will discuss about the verbal and non-verbal means of communication which play a very key role in the case of a context. Verbal communication, what do we mean by that? In social work practice, good communication skills are crucial for establishing efficient and respectful relationships with our clients, that is our service users and they are the heart of best practice in casework. So, during casework, social workers must demonstrate several skills while assessing or interviewing a client. So, verbal communication is a key skill and verbal communication refers to the face to face interaction that we are having with our clients and it involves the impact of the actual words that we use while we are speaking. And it is not only oral communication, verbal communication also includes written communication. It is important that social workers have to be very aware of how and what they are communicating as in a casework situation. Clients usually are often aware that they are in a state of incongruence and they come with a bag of mixed feelings about the helping situation and they are very highly vulnerable. So, in order to achieve congruence, a caseworker has to be active by using appropriate language so that the clients can feel fully understood and listened to. It is through such verbalizing that social workers can certainly convey genuine warmth, respect and non-judgmental attitudes towards the clients that is our service users. And indeed verbal communication plays a major role when working with other colleagues and professionals and it is essential for decision making and assessment. So, having seen verbal communication, now let us look at what do we mean by non-verbal communication. Non-verbal communication is also a very major component for interpersonal skill repertoire and it includes body language such as the posture, the facial expressions, gestures, physical appearance, eye contact and so on. And it can support or contradict verbal communication. These days even proxemics, time and paralanguage are also considered some sort of important modes of non-verbal communication. The importance of non-verbal communication has long been recognized and it is not a new thing. Way back in 1986, Demeto et al said that there are two dimensions for non-verbal communication. First thing is decoding or sensitivity and secondly it is encoding or expressiveness. So, according to these authors, 
Non-verbal decoding refers to the capacity to understand the emotions that have been conveyed by others through non-verbal cues such as facial expressions, body movements, voice tone, etc. And when we say non-verbal encoding, it refers to our capacity to express emotion through non-verbal cues. For example, much of the understanding of non-verbal communication can be gathered only through observation skills. So bear in mind, observation skills are also important and they are vital for social workers interviewing clients. Cordition and Cordition in 1997, they mentioned in their book that there are 5000 distinct different hand gestures and 1000 different steady postures. So precise observation of non-verbal behavior is very, very important. This is so because the clients may tell the social worker that they are coping fine in some instances I mean and don't need any help but by observing their facial expressions or lack of eye contact they may contradict this. At the same time social workers must be aware of their own capacity for self observation because it also gives an opportunity to analyze their role and impact. So that's about communication. Now let's go on to the next section that's on interviewing. And bear in mind, interviewing is an important communication technique. So let us look at interviewing in this section. In the earlier section, we have learned that communication involves sharing of thoughts, feelings, attitudes, ideas through the exchange of verbal and nonverbal means. In the same manner, an interview is a special form of communication. The social work interviews are typical because they include many aspects of the general process of communication. Consequently, the above mentioned general process of communication contributes a better understanding of the concept of social work interview. Interviewing is one of the most important communication interviews used and it's called as a tour par excellence for social workers. And uh, being one of the most used techniques, social workers make people talk fully, freely and truthfully. So interview means it is a means through which the feelings, opinions, experiences, attitudes of a variety of people are explored. And interviewing is as old as the human race and as extensive as the leading professions of today. So what do some authors say? What are the definitions of interviewing? What do they define interview as? Since interview serves a variety of purposes for different people, no single formal definition of interview can be arrived at. So most often we see that in literature, synonyms such as meeting, conference, consultation, questioning, visits, conversation, discussion, etc. They are all used to discuss the scope of an interview or explain the scope of an interview. From a common sense point of view, interviewing seems to be a specialized form of conversation. It's a means by which we exchange our experiences, reveal our attitudes and express our views. Khan and Cannell, they defined interview as a conversation with a purpose. Whereas Jung, a writer related to research, saw interviewing as a systematic method by which a person enters into the life of another person, that is the inner life of another and that person is comparatively a stranger to him. So he felt that interviewing was of that type. Good and Hatt said that interviewing is an interpersonal face-to-face -face situation in which interviewer asks questions pertinent to his research and the respondent answers. Pope points out that interviewing is a conversational encounter between two individuals. Matarazzo in 1965, long back, mentioned that interviewing is one of the many techniques through which one person exerts influence on the other. So, in the context of social work practice, we concentrate more on the professional interview that is based on certain philosophical assumptions and values of humankind. We have been studying in our lessons that all individuals are considered to be unique. They have inner strengths and competencies and that need to be mobilized both so that they can participate freely and fully when we conduct the interviews. And so we should focus on the interview on the person that is the whole person and the person in situation configuration because this is what helps us to get the big picture of the client's world. 
An effective interview thus has a clear purpose, it's well planned and it promotes controlled interaction between the social worker and the client. Having seen the definitions, now let's move on to the skills and techniques of interviewing. Before we go on to the skills and techniques, as students and anyway as viewers, we need to be clear about what is the difference between a skill and a technique. As the term itself suggests, skill is an ability that one acquires as a result of training and experience, while technique is a procedure by which a task is completed or accomplished. Of course, there is often a considerable overlap while describing skills and techniques used by the social worker and the terms are used interchangeably. Now in this particular section, let us look at the basic skills of interviewing. You all agree that when we start interviewing our clients, the first and foremost thing that we should bear in mind is creating a supportive environment to our clients. One of the important tasks of a social worker with regard to interviewing skills is that supportive environment and safe environment needs to be created. So, when we say a safe and a supportive environment, it means it is an environment where the client feels free to open up, to let down their self-guard and speak more freely. And when we do so, it helps to promote a sense of respect and equality between the caseworker and the client. And such a relationship leads us to another skill called as relationship, that is building relationship. This is a core skill in interviewing practice and this begins essentially with establishing rapport uh, because establishing rapport leads to sustainment of the relationship. It is characterized by a non-possessive warmth that is manifested by the interviewer and other qualities such as showing acceptance, being empathetic, being genuine and showing respect to our clients. So when we are doing so, what happens is the clients feel very free, clients or families. They feel free to disclose their thoughts, feelings and reactions and ultimately this leads to a feeling of acceptance and respect. All through this particular journey, we need to be good listeners. So, for an effective interview, we need to have a skill called as active listening. The terms listening may appear to many people as being very straightforward, but students should learn that active listening skills need to be learnt and practiced in training, developed and refreshed for effective use during interviews because they involve real life situation and especially in an interview important information is being elicited. So active listening describes a special and demanding alertness on the part of the social worker while interviewing a client. It's about being present psychologically, socially and emotionally and just not physically. And how do we do that? We use skills such as paraphrasing, reflecting and open and closed questioning so that we convey to the clients that we have full interest and understanding of what they are saying, especially clients when they are vulnerable. So that takes us to the other skills. That is the next important skill is as mentioned earlier questioning. Questioning is very important because it's a source for gaining information from our clients and it's a fundamental to successful interviewing. So when we say questioning, asking relevant questions to elicit information is the basic key to all skills or all forms of social work practice. It's only through effective questioning that we can help the family to examine their situations, bring forth facts, feelings and opinions into the conversation. So while questioning, we need to probe, we need to explore so that we can draw descriptions of the events and the problems and also the interconnection between those events and problems. This helps to open lines of communication and it's an important aspect for problem solving process. So again, having seen that questioning is the key factor, what are the sort of questions that we can ask our clients? First and essential skill required is open questioning. And when we say open questioning, we are referring to broad questions that give scope to the client to open and talk 
about themselves. And when we say open questions, they are not questions that can be answered with yes or no. Open-ended questions are those questions which promote clarity. They help the client to move at his own pace and they encourage client's involvement in the information gathering process. Some examples. For example, when you want to use open questioning, when the client is talking, can you tell me something more about the job that you are doing? That is an open question. And when the client is explaining a situation, what is your opinion about the current situation? What do you think I can do for you? So these are the kind of open questions that bring out the inner uh, feelings and help the clients to tell their story. On the other hand, we do also have closed questions. Closed questions are essential sometimes because they invite short focused answers. And answers to the closed questions are often either yes or no, right or wrong, etc. And we also have something called as a leading question or a loaded question. A leading question usually subtly points out to the respondent's answer in a certain direction. And we also have other questions such as recall and process questions. That is because we want the clients to recall or remember something or where we want some deeper thought or analysis, we can use recall or process questions. And again, while we are interviewing our clients, the students should essentially learn some techniques, very important techniques which are essential to enter into the world of the clients. And first among them is the reflective techniques. When we say reflecting, it is a process of paraphrasing and restating both the feelings and words of the client. Why should we use reflecting? Because when we use reflecting, the purpose of reflecting is that we can allow the client to hear his own thoughts and words so that they feel that whatever they have said has been focused. And it is also useful to show the clients that we are trying to perceive the world of the client as they see it and we are doing our best to understand their messages. And when we continue to reflect, we encourage our clients to talk more freely and it helps us to dwell on the content and feeling to truly reflect what the client has said. So that is very important. So again, how do we understand this, this better? How can we use the technique of reflecting? There are two main sub techniques that are involved. One is mirroring. Mirroring is a simple form of reflecting and repeating exactly what the client has said. When the client says something to us, when you repeat it back to the client, that is called as mirroring. And another technique that we can use is paraphrasing, which I mentioned earlier. In paraphrasing, it's slightly different from mirroring. We use other words to reflect the what the client has said. Paraphrasing shows not only what you are listening, but that you are trying to attempt, you are trying to understand what the client is saying. So, mirroring and paraphrasing as a part of reflecting are key to an effective interview in social work context. We all know that throughout the process we need to be supportive. So, we need to have some supportive techniques. What are these supportive techniques? They help us to improve, reinforce or sustain the well-being of our clients, especially those clients who are in a source of trouble, in a state of incongress, they need the assistance of the caseworker. So when we say supporting, we refer to the care and concern that we are showing to the client during the interview process. How do we show our support? We praise, we appreciate, we demonstrate that we help we are with the client and it helps us to build the needed trust. Another way in which we can show support is encouraging our clients because this encouragement raises the level of confidence of the clients. So again here we can use verbal or non-verbal cues to express that our sense of encouragement to the clients. And I am sure all of you agree that assurance and reassurance is very very important. And what do we mean by assurance and reassurance? It refers to the kind of words that we use to call, create comfort and 
to in the client it also refers to some sort of advice that we give to our client so that they feel less worried and less anxious about their situation because they come in a certainly in a state of apprehension if they're having a severe problem so the comforting words can cover anything that as a social worker you do in order to increase their level of confidence and that moves us on to the intervention how do we do effective intervention how do we intervene very effectively with our clients first way we can do is giving information to the clients to understand the situation we educate our clients education here means going beyond information that is giving something more than the information so that it refers to coaching sharing of ideas discussion engaging etc we provide direction we also use the technique of clarification and interpretation when we are working with a clients so in this section we discussed about the importance of communication and the importance of interviewing and we also discussed about the skills and techniques of interviewing